Today we're going to be talking about how to use the sound spectrum to mix the elements in your songs better. What up guys, I'm No Damage, and before we get started, I'm going to play a couple of songs for you of my own from some upcoming tracks that I'm going to be releasing so you can get a better understanding of where you're getting your knowledge from. All right, let's get started. Even if your production is already at the level of some of the songs I just played for you, that's cool. I think you'll still learn something from this tutorial. When you're working on a song, it's really easy for you to like find two elements and need them to have a better sounding relationship. So the first thing you might do is be like, which one's the most important sound? Maybe it's the saw bass. And you're like, okay, I don't want to touch that one. And then you go to the sub bass, which is different. It's a different sound. And you're like, okay, I'm going to cut out these elements or I'm going to side chain these elements so that when the saw bass is hitting, the sub bass is ducking. This is all cool, common stuff. But something I like to do, instead of cutting frequencies that you need that make the sound what it is, like the whole song collectively, we're going to use the sound spectrum, like the width spectrum, to be able to maneuver some of the frequencies that are commonly clashing into different spaces so that they all still work together but instead of them being on top of each other they're separate if that makes sense let's take a quick listen to the song at hand You get it. So we have two instruments that we're going to focus on. Not the whole mix. It's not mixed. Obviously, we're just pretending like we're starting a mix. And I'm going to focus on two elements. One being this saw bass right here. And the other one being... Let me turn this off. And the other one being this element here. One's a bass, more sub bass ish, and the other one's like the top end of that. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So in this bass here, we're rolling off at 100. The problem's gonna be everything up to about 1000 hertz. So instead of obviously going to that sub bass, like, and you can see it here, I'll play it for you. <laughs> So in the other instrument, that would be where we would want to cut because obviously that's our forefront. All right, there's something in the weight of this sound here. Obviously, we like that. That's very cool. We want to keep that. We don't want to cut that out. We don't want to dip it like this. It's just not going to have the same weight as this. I want that in there because if you notice in this sound, That frequency range where this instrument is sitting does not have the weight of the other instrument. That's why it's fucking there. All right, so let's play them together. Fire. We're gonna make this real simple, you guys. I know the frequency range where the problem's happening, and it's in this space. It's above 100, all the way up to 1,000. So we'll just say everything above 100 on this I'm going to call it weekendy style bass needs some help. We can see that it's mono. Right. right in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the low end. We don't need this low end area. Just everything above 100. We're going to turn that on. I'm pushing it all the way for this example. You can do it however you want, but I'm going to push it all the way. It doesn't matter because Ozone's imager is mono compatible. So whatever you do in here, you should still have the same end result in stereo but in mono and it won't sound fucked up. I guess I'm not this isn't a fucking isotope imager tutorial. Okay. And I'm going to turn on the stereo eyes because even if you turn this up like like You're not really getting anything unless you stereoize it, right? And if you have headphones on or if you have speakers, 
you're going to hear this. If you don't have speakers and you're using a laptop for your speakers and fuck, I don't know what to tell you. Probably not going to hear the result of this. So we've obviously widened those frequencies. Let's listen to the two instruments together at the same time without and with this plugin on. Not only can I clearly hear my sub bass, the top end of my sub bass, I could hear the movement in notes, the shifting in notes. Whereas when it's off and those frequencies are on top of each other, it's not like the song is ruined. It's just, it doesn't sound as good and big and audible when you have this on and we're not cutting anything away. We're just moving it. So instead of it being right in the middle together, that saw base stays down, you know, middle lane. And then the other frequencies in that one base, we'll call it the sub base, are just widened probably a lot, you know, enough to the point where they're not going to be conflicting. And they are the two bases in the song. Let's hear it again. again. Cool. Thanks, Ableton. If your ear if your ear is not hearing the difference, it's literally because your ear is just not trained enough to hear frequencies. Because I can audibly, and I'm not even sitting in the middle of my room, I'm off to the right. I can audibly hear the shift in those frequencies go from here, if I'm looking at the speakers, to like right here. And then I can't hear audibly that tone of that instrument. And that's the point of this tutorial is I want you to be able to move things around the spectrum so that you can make way for the frequencies you want to be heard without having to cut and compromise the integrity of your song. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys and I hope to make more of these. I'll see you guys soon.